Ratatouille. Welcome to Ratatouille Talks, episode 7. The weekly show where Jules and Perry talk about making games together and playing games together. I am one of your hosts, Jules, and my co-host is Perry. Hey man, how you doing? Aloha from the great state of Hawaii. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy if you lived in Hawaii? I could. You could. I kind of want to. You should. Even though we had a really mild winter here in uh, Iowa, um, it, 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 I'm just getting sick of that cold. Yeah. And I'm, I'm ready to move to Hawaii. I don't care. Bring the volcanoes. Sometimes that molten lava sounds like it'll be soothing, you know? True. <laughs> right in comparison to where you are. It's like, ooh, that sounds nice, actually. Yeah. I know. Oftentimes, you know, because we chat practically daily on the video call action and oftentimes you'll show me outside and it was blanketed with snow. It was like, Oh my Mm -hmm. gosh. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's how cold it is there. Yeah. 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 I didn't even, I didn't even like my wife would be like, it's snowing. It's blizzarding outside. It's like, what? I didn't even know it was going to snow the other day. It's like, okay, apparently I'm supposed to do it again tomorrow. Oh really? God. Yeah. I was wearing shorts too. I was like, we we were getting some glimpses of spring, you know, and I had the windows open, these huge windows. It was great. Like it's a high. Alas. Oh, okay, it's a bit chillier down here today. Okay. Normally it's been quite nice down here, but it's a high of 50, mm-hmm. a low of 39 today. So it's a bit chilly down here. Yeah, today. it's 48 right now. Oh, wow. You're, hot. You're hotter than it is here right now. Yeah. 47 apparently right now. Good. <laughs> Weird. You're about to move to Hawaii. Yes, I wish. Not really. Actually, we have considered it over the years. but I think You should move better. to Atui. Exactly. I've been to Hotel. We went to for Christmas one time. It was great. It was weird though because it wasn't cold at all. It was like you know what you could probably like... convince them that you're the king of a <laughs> Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> right? Oh, but you said it wasn't very hot. No, it was lovely. When you went, that's what was weird. It was beautiful. Oh. So it was weird that it wasn't. It didn't feel like it was winter. You know, mm-hmm. so it was beautiful, but it's almost like this doesn't feel like Christmas. But mm-hmm. it was amazing. We went, yeah, we went to Kauai that is known as Kauai today. Back in the day, it was labeled a Tui at one point, hence the name of our company. And hence the name of the podcast. Skip on babbly boobly. See, you thought it was going to be up the, They thought this was going to be about the video game company, a Tui. Right, but actually, didn't know this was is the ancient deep, civilization A deep of a dive <laughs> into the history of, of, of Hawaii. Exactly. Oh, good times, oh. good times. So I, I did not shave this week, so... Mm. I'd be interested to, because I always feel like I look at least five, if not 10 years older when I don't shave. Mm-hmm. So you tell me how much older I look. And it's really hard to tell right now because is it, it's the so fuzzy Zencaster is so yeah. <laughs> I know. Mine too. Like yeah. the resolution is like two. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, like two P. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, you, you five to, five years older, but five years sexier. Mm, That's you said what I it. say. Cheeky I'm just monkey. saying. Such a charmer over there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we're going to dive into the show. On that note, let's change subjects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so update. So Hatch Tales. Uh, yeah, I dove back into the artwork after our big uh, focus on RBR, the casual online party game. Um, so, the yeah, the artwork of uh, Hatch Tales is going great. I'm working on a bunch of stuff right, right now, the HD stuff, and that's looking awesome. So, yeah. Oh, it is. It's looking fantastic. So that's, Exciting. Um, yeah, chugging along nicely. You just gave me a, a nice glimpse of it before we recorded. Yeah, super fun. So, yeah, man, it's exciting. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to wrap that game up. I mean, I know everyone is, but um, yeah, it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. And then RBR, um, we were in the final stretch of that, the Secret Casual Online Party game. Um, actually, we're adding full, well, not full, we're adding a lot of language support. I guess full would be Ooh. hundreds of languages, wouldn't it? Uh, but they're adding yeah. the, the, the basics, the e-figs, as they call it, uh, English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, but they're also adding a Japanese. Uh, I don't know why I said a Japanese, like I'm um, saying it in French or something that makes no sense. Whatever, okay. we'll go with it. It's okay. Anyway, so that, that's awesome and a lot of work, but it'll be really exciting to be able to jump in the game, mm-hmm. jump in the game and choose your language. And um, yeah, we're bridging, bridging, you know, the language barrier, man. Someone in Germany can be saying, hey, something. And I almost said it, but I'm not going to because we haven't revealed what the wow. game is yet. Wow, yeah, yeah. And then someone somewhere else can go, huh. And they're saying it in their language. You're saying it in your language, bridging the divide. You it's should a truly trick them global experience. You should Perry. trick them into like agreeing to things that they don't necessarily agree with. It'd be True. funny. That would be funny. 
I don't know how you do International that. International trickery. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there you go. So Very that's cool. the update for now. Yeah. Oh, cool. So vague. It'll be nice to talk about that game. It will be nice. It's, it's, yeah. Indeed, it will. Um, but, but it'll just, it's just nice. It's, it's also just the anticipation that's killing me mm-hmm. along with everyone else. So indeed, indeed, indeed. the uh, yeah, testing has been that. really fun with that. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to talk about it soon. Yeah, man. So fun stuff. Uh, would you be so kind as to move us into the question section of the show? Question, question time. time. All right. Uh, this one comes from Matt. He <laughs> says, how did, so Jules, how did Mutant Mud's collection come about? What made you release all three games as one? I'm glad you asked, Matt. Very interesting question. <laughs> um, actually, the story of Muds on Switch is uh, somewhat of a checkered past. Um, when we first got the dev kit of the Switch, or some may call it the Switch dev kit, um, we actually got Muds running on it in literally days, I want to say, because Matthew mm. is awesome at doing such things, and also a testament to how flexible and awesome the Switch is. Um, so we had Muds running on it. I want to say in days, it was like not, dare I say hours? Maybe, but I'll have to check with Matthew. And what version one. would that have been of MUDS? Ju- just just MUDS Deluxe. Just, it was the, like I guess the- The Vita or? Right, the one before that was probably PS4. PS4. It was the one we'd done yeah. previous, I want to Because they're say. quite different. I mean, like- They are. From resolution I mean, you know, wise, not, what they yeah. show- Anyway, so we got that running on the uh, Switch quite fast, and it was very exciting, which meant MUDS, Super Challenge, has the air drifter, all of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, Therefore, could have, you know, we're running on the Switch pretty darn fast. And something that that still hurts, honestly, a little bit is that we were told we were not allowed to release it uh, on the Mm -hmm. Switch at the launch of uh, of the Switch which I wish I'd ignored that and just done it like the world of goo guys clearly did, but I didn't. And I wish I had (laughs) because at that time there was one, maybe two games a week and they were selling gangbusters because there was Mm -hmm. one or two a week. And uh, we were told to wait six months before we could do anything. Um, So like good boys, we did. And uh, yeah, wish I hadn't. But um, anyway, Mm -hmm. back to the actual question. I just had to preface it with the, 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 the history mm, of, yeah. of, of what was going on. So by the time it came around to us being allowed to release it on the Switch, yes, I'm saying that. And the, I, I don't really hold Nintendo as a whole responsible for that. The person that communicated to that, that to me, I won't say the name, but doesn't work there anymore. So that's why I feel a little bit more freer talking about it. I, I think it was really more their agenda, perhaps, than the company at large. Um, so this isn't really a diss against Nintendo, but that individual person that literally told me, on the phone conveniently that we weren't allowed to do it. There's no paper trail to prove it. Mm, convenient. Wow. Anyway, sometimes that's how business goes, which is not cool. Anyway, um, but when it t- came time for us to be allowed to do it, we're like, man, how do we make it stand out? Because, you know, as soon as that six month uh, period ended, suddenly there was a, the, the dam had been broken over and there was like 20 games a week. Suddenly it went from one to two to 20 a week, literally overnight as soon as everyone was allowed to release their games. And it was like, oh man, how are we going to stand out? And that's when we're like, let's make it special. You know, let's put Mods, let's put Super Challenge, let's put... And then we're like, what's the third game going to be? How do we round this mm-hmm. out? And that's when we decided to take um, Bomb Monkey and uh, modernize it, which I'm really glad we did because it's a fantastic version of the game. Um, it is a better ge- version, it I is. think. It is, it's cool. Yeah, it's I love cool it. cool on the Switch too. Like you can use, like it's pretty cool. Like yeah. using the touch screen and stuff. You can rotate and you can do it. Vertical and, mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty cool. So that, that's kind of the, the, the journey behind that is we wanted to make it special and stand out, you know, up against everything, the sea of crazy, you know, the glut mm-hmm. of releases that was already happening then, let alone today, you know, five years later mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Um, so that's why we made it special. Yeah. Mud's collection. Thought that'd be fun. It's and, funny. Um, I remember when we had you on the podcast the first time, Maybe it was the se- second time. No, it was the first time. And you had just announced Mutant Muds mm. on Switch. Mm. Well, you had shown it on your dev kit. Oh, okay. And everyone like freaked out about it. And then we had you on the on our podcast and um at, and you're like you're just kind of teasing it. 
Mm. And then you just, it was just Mutant Muds at that time, Deluxe. And then, mm-hmm. like, afterwards, mm-hmm. you showed me the mud blocks. Collection. You showed me the whole collection, like, yeah. saying, like, of course, we're going to add a, all three of them, you know, make mm-hmm. this together and it's going to be a cool yeah. collection. But yeah. Yeah. And which it, was exciting. Yeah. To have it's it. It's funny because I had my, my buddy, James, which you've met over, and um, I showed, I got to show him Mutant Muds because um, he had only seen it on the Switch. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and he's new. He's kind of relapsed back into gaming. Mm-hmm. So he had never back. seen it. Yeah. You know, he, he hadn't yeah. seen the 3DS. Oh, right. Because it's just like, you know, it's like, he, it's like in that his blind period. spot where he, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. got married, went to school and stuff. Yep. Anyway. So I was like, have you even seen 3 d on the 3DS? Oh and I took, I took my 3 dash and showed him Mutant Muds, which he's been playing. He's like, oh. <laughs> he's like, this is amazing. The 3D he was a, yeah. yeah. He was astounded at it. Yeah. So, and it's funny that it's funny wow. this. Because he brought it up, he's like, "Man, there." I was going through um, that uh, the Mutant Muds collection. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of game there. That's what. That's what he said. <laughs> he just. He just like the other day. He just told, told me that because, like, I know he's like, and I was playing the Super Challenge. It's super fun. So yeah, it's anyway, almost too much game. Honestly, kind of fun. Yeah, no, it is. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, because the first game. I mean, there's a total of 120 levels in this i think muds has 80 and i think super challenge has 40 something mm-hmm. like that um yeah there's a ton in there and then we added uh, online leaderboards which is great a really nice little mm-hmm. cheeky little addition in there so everyone can compare their individual levels their, their times their, right yeah their times yeah They're very cool of the entire game i can't believe you add that i always forget about know, that isn't that crazy and the other really neat feature that matthew added is if you have a friend who's playing online and you're friends with them on switch it will tell you what level they're in, which not many mm, games that's utilize right, that that's function. That's right. So you can see, oh, so and so is in world level blah. Yeah, two game, four level, whatever, yeah. yeah, it's like so cool. Oh, that is rumble, cool. The rumble uh, effect as well has been added again. Testament to Matthew, he really single handedly mm. did that, and then really upped his game for Zero Drift to rumble on Switch is like that through was awesome. the roof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the that's the story behind that. HD came Rumble, out, HD Rumble baby, came out in December 2017, so the year that the Switch released, um, which is good. And actually, cool. a little anecdote. Well, actually, not yet. Well, yeah, whatever. Whatever you want to call it, a little bit of tidbit, a factoid. It of that year, it so it got 85 um, out of 100 on Metacritic, which is pretty good for Metacritic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's number 15 of ranking of 2017 releases on switch that's pretty good considering how many games came out that year so number 15 not bad there you go you go to metacritic you can see it it's right there little badge they add to it when you go to muds when you link it i saw it on the side the other Uh day i'm like whoa i didn't know that that's so cool you're like i'll take that i'll take that reward (laughs) and i will tell everyone about it yeah that's (laughs) Um, cool man yeah man super cool so thank you for asking that question matt Mm-hmm. Thanks, Matt. Um, all right. I have a question for Perry from Jerry. <laughs> what are you working on right now? It's a very open um, question. Yeah. Uh, I'm working on my own little secret prototype project that's incredibly exciting. That I what, are you, what, are you make, what are you making it in? What are you, how, are you, how are you constructing this this creation? Yeah, so I'm, I'm working with a friend mm-hmm. who's learning how to program. Uh, and, and he's doing a bunch of different stuff. And so we're working in Unity and creating a game from scratch. Um, and I've always had this idea going, going around in my head. And uh, for like, this has been going on for five years, this concept for a game that we're kind of actualizing. Well, at least we're starting the process of it. What I love about it is that the game is being the skeleton of the game is there, but we haven't really found its identity for like the gameplay. Um, not the hook of the gameplay, the hook of the gameplay is there, but it's just the feel of the game. Like what it's mm-hmm. going to like, it's going to be that main, the final it, implementation. Yeah. yeah. It's it, which it's, you know, you, you put something down, you can only do so much designing on paper until you put it in there. Mm-hmm. And it's just so fascinating. So we're putting it stuff in there, making lots of changes already, uh, making all the mistakes that you make uh, when you're mm-hmm. learning how to do stuff and then fixing them. And it's really satisfying. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, yeah, I will say this, that fans of a TUI will be excited about this. I think that's pretty safe to say. I think so. I no, it's coming along great. I have I have seen it, so I'm aware of what you're talking about. Mm. Um, and yeah, 
so I think it's fair to say you're kind of in a prototyping phase right now, I yeah. guess, right? Yeah. Um, which yeah. is super fun, super fun phase to be in. Uh, in addition to working on All everything else stuff. we're working on. <laughs> yeah. But that's your main. It's fun juice because this is right a now. new, yeah, this is a new pro. So it, it's way different because, you know, I, I get to think about it a lot, but really, um, my friend is doing all the work right now mm-hmm. and, and he's, and he's, you know, and reaching out to me, we're doing some meetings and stuff, but you know, mm-hmm. the programming is the main part of it right now, you know? So yeah, man, super yeah, fun. fun. Very exciting. Very, yeah, everyone's going to be, uh, well, I know everyone's going to be super jazzed about it. Yeah. They're going to hear yeah, about it. So gonna, it's yeah. it's fun. You know, and it, and it's, and it, I think it's a good, I think, I mean, what you're trying to do is keep it under control as far as scope, mm-hmm. which I think is wise for any, well, for any game period, but uh, especially yeah. if it's kind of a pseudo early or first effort, um, it's good to kind of try and keep it in a scope that's doable, basically. So you it's feel really, that sense yeah. of reward when it's actually done and you can actually manage it rather than it be, I'm going to make a Final Fantasy game. Okay, good luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's like, there's nothing wrong with that desire, but. You may end and up. it's the I mean it is it is such a struggle I get I, I it's hard for me to do it even with my game deck stuff mm-hmm. um, yep. about I want to keep adding more and more and more to yep. it and it's like you just gotta stop it's and tough. so it's really tough in prototyping when you're like oh like but this would be so cool you know yeah. and we go this is a daily thing with me and you with every game we do mm-hmm. like it is seriously both of us we're like oh that'd be so cool yeah we can't do it but man it'd be Add cool. it to the sequel list yeah, exactly. So yep. it, is, it is hard. That's, that is so, that's it my is. hardest thing. And I think that's something that for people who are making games, especially well, experienced and not experienced, you know, it's something, a good reminder, I think, to hear is it's what, what you don't do is just as important as what you do do. Mm-hmm. You know, like what you, you choose just said, to do. I just said do do. I love saying do do. Uh, do do. Um, it is a skill you have to develop as far as what is commercially acceptable, you know, like um, what matches your original vision? Like what is, mm-hmm. what meets your original vision and is good, you know, good enough kind of thing. Not good enough, yeah. not just good enough, but what at least, what is the, what is the least to obtain your original vision? Mm. Assuming your original vision was great. What is the minimum you can do to pull that off? And that's probably what you should shoot for because it's easy exactly. to double that. Um, just you know ideas will exactly. come along so it's tough to kind of just say no to yourself um it especially is. if it's a good idea <laughs> you know we have plenty of I great mean, ideas that a, would be like that's it's a great. fun thing to, right. and it's funny because it's it's a fun thing to struggle with too like you know what i mean uh-huh. it's yep. i mean there's the actual programming and design of the game which is like like you know and then there's just using <laughs> unity and mm-hmm. having all those issues and okay we're not synced up with each other what the heck is going on? i mean there's that mm-hmm. stuff that's just the worst right. yep. but then the fun part of the be- of of the hard like the fun difficult stuff is is like what should we make it how how do we solve this issue mm-hmm. how can we how can we use what we have yeah you know how, to make it a really strong base that we can we can just flip very easily to make mm-hmm. it whoa that's cool you know we have our I tools think- here and How do we make it interesting? Yeah. And I think something that certainly helps me and maybe will help other people try and keep the eye on the prize, keep you honest with yourself, is really kind of adopting a lot of what Nintendo's philosophy is. Um, I know Mimoto has talked a lot about this in his interviews and, and such, is squeezing the most out of every single effort that you put into the game. So, for example, if your player can jump, um, great you know don't necessarily think he needs a double jump or needs some special ability to fly like maximize the jumping small jumping big jumping jumping while you're running jumping while you're standing still jumping to avoid something jumping to Mm. get up up something what are all of the ways you can maximize jumping exactly and 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 really and do that with every single thing you put into the game okay now i can shoot great so one brick at a time and maximize the crap out of that one addition rather than because otherwise if your core player package and say you can run and jump, if that if you've got that in the game and that isn't fun, okay, you've got a problem. Don't add to it. Fix that problem. Because if your game isn't mm-hmm. fun and you can run and jump, <laughs> what's going on? You know, mm-hmm. maybe it's the way it feels. 
uh, as far as when you move in a direction, you know, the acceleration or maybe the deceleration or whatever, or the speed, or maybe it's the level design that you're throwing at the player package isn't, you know, mm -hmm. fully pulling something out of it. Figure out what that problem is before you add something new yeah. to the mix because you're just making it more complicated for yourself. Now you have another yeah. thing to worry about. And it's hard enough uh, fine tuning things, let alone having this cascading effect that affects everything. It's like, woof, yeah. get out of control real fast. So less is more. I mean, we've talked about so many times just Super Mario Bros. That game still to this day is seriously to me so great. one of the most incredibly designed games ever. Mm -hmm. just in its in its player package and its enemy package where absolutely just like you said you can jump okay he can jump that's all he can do literally it's all mario <laughs> that's can, all do. He can do he can run and jump yeah. but mm -hmm. he can jump on a turtle mm -hmm. they, they then changes that to this pushable Weapon, object basically. yeah i mean it can hurt you as well that's what mm -hmm. I'm, so you have this risk reward thing yeah and then and then the satisfaction and there's lots of satisfaction yeah. areas it's just exactly so another good. example of and they did that jump and you bonk your head great that does something you know so yeah all, all yes. directions of jumping does something i mean they clearly maximize yeah. that one button ability so clever. i guess you can run too they did that there's mm -hmm. running from the so yeah. you can walk you can run and you can sprint right with mm -hmm. mario and so yeah. how to, you know yeah which is fascinating. so cool yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's so good but and yeah, it's, it's still good. awesome to this day so man mm -hmm. yeah cool and that's you know i just think of that game as like the pioneering of the game design, you know, it's in itself, because it's yeah. just, a, it was a new medium and such a perfect yeah. example. It um, is. And it's actually really impressive when you look at the latest version of that, you know, new Super Mario Brothers on the Switch. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, it is infinitely different, but at the same time, it's completely the same. I mean, yes, yeah. it's way more nuanced and it got all kinds of depth and incredible technology and it's incredibly difficult to make that mm -hmm. game, but it's under the hood. It's basically the same game. Yeah. Kind of amazing. So it like the man, they managed to, you know, walk between those two worlds so well, and they make it look effortless when you play it. But that was uh, that was tough. It was tough, I think, to to make those decisions and be restrained, um, mm. and it in and still appeal to new players and experienced players at the same time. I mean, that's practically yeah. impossible to achieve, and they it's, they do it. It's fun, right? Because they definitely branched. I mean. Mm -hmm. I love it because I guess at one point I'm assuming they thought Super Mario 64 was the way to go. I mean, when that happened, it's like, okay, sure. we're done with the 2D yeah. and now we're moving on, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, then eventually, absolutely. and then 64 happened and then, and then Sunshine. And then I think. And then GameCube, right? Um, yeah. Sunshine. Yeah. Sorry. That's Sunshine. Um, and I th there wasn't a 2D one around, on GameCube, was there? No. 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 I think around. Uh, I guess the it had to be before, before DS. Galaxy, I think it even. But even before Galaxy, they're like, oh, let's go back to the 2D, I, you know, when, for, oh, for the so DS. Was, well, yeah, was it DS or the Wii? Super Mario Bros. 2D. The was DS it DS? one did. Yeah, it was DS. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, Which it, was more know. acceptable because it's a handheld machine. So, okay. Yeah. So, it's still handheld. It wasn't console. But when it landed on console, what a great game. New Super Mario Brothers on Wii. On Wii? Wii was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. That was great. It was a little on the easy side from my memory. I may be wrong though, but yeah, I remember it's really, it, that one was very much crafted for multiplayer. Yeah, that's true. And I played oh, that whole great. game with three people and it what was so much fun. Multiplayer experience. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah, a lot so, of memories about that. That was amazing. Bubble, just bubble yeah. it. Just bubble it. Pop, get bubble, me out. Pop bubble, me. Yeah. Get me out. <laughs> you jump. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, yeah. And then the um, 3DS there's, game was good, but then the Wii yeah. U, I think, still Yeah, the Wii U version it, is wow. In my opinion. I, I agree. That version is everything. And then that's it's actually pretty on much sale what we have right on now. Switch. Oh, yeah. I'm going to buy it digitally because I What it's is one the difference? That... What is the difference between the Wii U and the Switch one? Uh, they are the same. And they, 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 they put Switch the, has, Luigi uh, stuff. the Luigi DLC on that. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if there's anything else different besides you can't use the gamepad as the fifth. Such a good game. Yeah. Solid. Cool. Very good. Excellent. That's what, um, I'm, that's what I've been up to. That's what you've been working on. All right. On to the next <laughs> section as far as playing games. Um, I continued playing some Voice of Cards, the Forsaken Maiden, a little bit. I kind of, I don't know what's wrong with me. I have a problem, clearly. But I veered off of that in search of more Pokemon. What is going on with you? It's like I you just can't, know. you can't, can't satisfy that craving. Like, exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with in that. In and of itself. <laughs> So I actually dove into Pokemon Fire Red on GBA, which nice. I thought I had played quite a bit back in the day, but I have no memory of it. So either I didn't play it or I deleted that part of my memory files. Um, but mm -hmm. that's fun. Jumping back into that. It's and beautiful kind of game. Differences. It is. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, the GBA, it's, right? It's just 
Totally, dude. Seeing that, I mean, seeing that it's great because it's the height of pixel artwork. I mean, that and the Super Nintendo, of course. But, you know, Pokemon wasn't on the Super Nintendo, so um, it's great to see it in that 16-bit style. It's really the only one, I guess, that we have, really. So it's, like, wonderful mm-hmm. to see that, you know, because the DS went more of a 2D, 3D kind of hybrid direction. Um, so, yeah, it's quite mm-hmm. lovely. So, anyway, so that's fun. Um, yeah, so I've been playing those two. Um, and I should say I did actually get the the new Wonderling DX released, I guess, today, I think, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um so you know, I'm dipping into that. So that's fun. So shout out to those guys because they, they obviously did a lot of work to kind of do a DX update to their game. It came out a couple of years ago and now they've done a big, massive DX um, free update to the original game. Um, and even it renamed the game to DX. So now the game that mm-hmm. was released is now technically a new game called DX, whatever. So I've been checking that out, I which is a good I game. Think, I think they were called retroid games but i think they changed and they changed the name to bitwave games right i because i saw the yeah. retroid in the demo because i went back to that to check that out yeah okay, is that right okay who's that yeah and that's right it's bitwave right is yeah. the team now so mm-hmm. i really enjoyed that game i reviewed that game when it came out and it was i it was just fun it's solid fun little it's like mm-hmm. an auto runner yeah and uh, what i love about that kind of yeah exactly what i love about those types of games is you can clearly feel and experience the sheer effort and passion they put into it just the, uh, the yes. from an art, um, just everything about it. Just the story, the you know, the just the the just the sheer work behind the craftsmanship of the art, sound, coding. It's yeah. just it's a lot of work. And you, there, you so can tell they're Nintendo cool. fans, which are my exactly. kind of people. You know, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love when you can see that. Um, so yeah, I love when you people, could tell, like when people were Genesis people, and you can tell mm-hmm. them totally dude. Super Nintendo. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. so that's fun. And I think you worked on both Genesis and Super Nintendo, uh-huh. right? Yep. And NES yeah. before that. Um, you worked on NES? Yeah, a little bit. You did? Mm-hmm. Crazy, Good right? night. I know. Yeah, ridiculous. Um, that is ridiculous. That was that's it for me. So. What games have you been playing, Perry? Oh, I've been playing more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Boom. Um, and I, I'm really liking it. It's uh, <laughs> just telling you today, it's 60 hours in. I'm almost done. I mean, it's it, but they're introducing... New game mechanics, still sixty hours. Unbelievable. Long. So I guess spoiler alert, but that's. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's really Something great. New it's it's in really fun, hours. and honestly, yeah, and this Amazing. the storytelling, the gameplay is fun, the world is beautiful, the game is just an all around incredible game. Um, go ahead. I can say you were telling me that they worked with on Breath of the Wild, which I Model didn't know. Soft. Yes, they did. They worked on which Breath of the Wild. Which is really fascinating um, to think of the similarities in scope to the exploration of the worlds between those mm-hmm. two games. It's like, oh, wow. Fascinating, yeah. right? So cool. And I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly what their part was, but I right. remember them people talking about it was world build. I think it had to do with yeah. you know, the world. And then, which so makes sense. You replace, yeah, you know, totally. And then also... Um, they're working on Breath of the Wild 2 with Nintendo mm-hmm. um, on this. And I wonder if we'll ever just... actually find out the the details of that, right? Like, were they... Yeah, I don't know. Was it programming technology? Was it art production? Was it both? You know, what yeah. is it that they're actually doing? Because I've always found that really interesting. Yeah. Is with uh, Smash Brothers, um, Namco, Ban- Bandai Namco, Namco, Bandai, whatever they're called, were working on Bandai or made Namco. Smash, right? Or had some heavy involvement yeah. in that. yeah. And they were also working on Metroid 4, right? Metroid Prime 4, they I think. Were. They before were. They, right, before they weren't. So yeah. it's like so interesting. I was really excited about that too. I, I was that like, would have been an interesting take. Because honestly, because of Smash and mm-hmm. um, other stuff, I, 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 I like what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, Smash is just amazing. So yeah. um, I was like, man, I want to see a Japanese take totally. on Metroid Prime. Like what yeah. is that look like compared mm-hmm. to, you know, from Metro doing it? Not that I love and Retro. So, you know, it's, Metro Prime's one of my favorite games. Yeah, no, it's just interesting to some, see some variety. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. Retro's version is going to be amazing. I'm, oh, uh, no doubt. It's going to be really looking forward it to it. It better be. Um, so Namco Bandai. Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco. Yeah, they, they changed it to Bandai <laughs> Namco. Yeah. Um, were they the primary developer of Smash? Like they made it basically? No, I mean okay. this for for they they I think on this the Wii U and 3DS version. Starting then, I think they were the that with Sora with okay Nintendo Sora with okay I don't know they they weren't I mean they were they were one of the main 
I mean, they were one of the primary developers, yes, for sure. Yeah. But I think they worked like I think it's like a code. I, I think they co developed yeah. it. Yeah. With, with uh, I mean, I wonder. So, yeah, it's very. I don't know. It, yeah, yeah, I'd love to find I'm out the details. Like of I, that. I know. I mean, but that's what I remember. So. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Because like, can really you imagine cool. taking on a brand like that? Like, hey, you guys are making the new Smash. Okay. No. Like that no. is a monolithic uh, task. It's so, and it's like if it's. If it's unbalanced in any way, Oof. you're going to hear about it. Inst- yes, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. And that's just... You know. well, and the Wii version is great. So I don't know if they had anything to do with that. But if they hadn't had anything to do with that and they're doing the next one, the Wii one was such a yeah. solid... Well, and and oh, you that know that this on, one... the same as the GameCube, but enhanced? Or was it brand new for the Wii? I can't remember. It, uh, dude, I, I became a fan on the 3DS one, so I don't, I, okay. I couldn't tell you. I the think they was, were new. Okay, because the Wii one was really neat because it had that single player thing, which my kiddos played uh-huh. that lot, you know, which was really, oh yeah, kind of amazing actually. Yeah, what was that? I forgot what that was called. I don't know. Yeah, if that's the adventure mode. Adventure, I think. It's I don't not know. If in that's, it. It's not. Okay. Yeah, that was actually kind that's of. Not that's what my this. kiddos loved playing. Was that was well, as, yeah. as well as the other modes, but. They played that a lot, and I, I was just watching it. And I'm like, "That's fascinating." It's, it's such a quirky platform mm-hmm. experience, platform um, totally combat experience. Um, anyway, Smash Crazy Town. Hey, I want some more um, Icarus, man. <sighs> that launch in the Dude, 3ds. Icarus. Good lord! Probably the showcase title wow. graphically, right? In like and in the narrative in, was like, very impressive system. and ambitious for the 3ds. Yes, absolutely. <sighs> The voice yeah, acting is great yeah. and funny, and, game, and the gameplay man. was cool. It's like Star Fox, and then it gets. I should down go back that. and play that. Yeah, we what really should. Game. That's a great game. That's what a fan. A I've, I've I've played through that game twice, and I it's, I'm I don't think I've even played it on my new 3ds, which would be awesome. Hmm. With the, with this with the tracking. Yeah. Remember, it came with that stand. I know, right? Exactly. I was thankful because yeah. I knew we were, we were working on uh, Dimension Remastered at the time. I think we were like, yes, get people used to this crazy, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, totally. stylus uh, gameplay. Maybe that will help. People uh, yeah. get into it with us because that was one of the challenges with the original Dimension on the DS was it's challenging to play a game like that. You know, to hold it in one hand and do the styles. I know. I'd it, always hook yeah. my. Um, I've got my two DS yep. here. Like some people actually, and, I don't know. I can't see. Let me make this bigger. Some people actually just hold it like this and have the pen and just drawing on top. So eventually, your wrist is just dead because you're oh, constantly yeah. doing that. So I'm like, no, just put your little pinky underneath that and. Just give oh, them yeah. better loop, and then you're good. So that, yeah, that's the, uh, the way I play it. You cool. know, what game I really loved was <laughs> Call of Duty Four. Dude, on the what DS. a great series, right? Those Call of Duty games from really, uh, N Space. Really yes, they're Those, good guys. Uh, we got to know them pretty well, actually. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, they're good guys. I, I honestly, I, I love I bought every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, I. Yep. I played Modern Warfare. The last one they did mm-hmm. it was like three Modern Warfare three. I played it like a couple of years ago and it, it's crazy how they made some changes. I didn't, it didn't run as well and stuff. It was mm-hmm. a lot different. I don't know what, what the difference was, but I definitely love the first. One. That's the only one I've really played is that first one. Yeah. I was but, shocked that didn't continue over to the 3ds. And when I, I asked them about it, I'm like, why are you guys not doing, this would be amazing. And Call of Duty was as big as ever. And I'd heard that the sales of Call of Duty on the DS were in, at least six digits, at least 100,000, maybe 200,000 mm-hmm. units. I mean, decent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess for EA, was it mm-hmm. you know, Activision? Sorry, whatever, whoever makes Activision. it. Activision, yeah. Activision. It wasn't big enough. It wasn't good mm-hmm. enough. It wasn't enough money. It wasn't enough profit. And it's like, mm-hmm. come on, man. How is it? If that's you, enough, you, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> you know I, mean? I know. And like, I dude, mean, Dementium and Moon on the 3DS mm-hmm. are some of the only first person shooters on that sad, system. Right? Yeah, there's it's like weird. Less than ten. Yeah, I mean, there's many. that, and there's Metro Prime Federation Force, right? And there's right. that other Steel Diver game that came out, the free to play one. That's technically a first person shooter, but like I can't even else? think of any other ones. I think did they do a GoldenEye on 3DS or was that DS? No, I'm thinking. that was DS. Yeah, <laughs> that was good too. So, Wait, but that 3D effect one. is so cool. So, I I loved uh, Federation Force. I I really did love that. I mean, it's, it's weird. I get the weirdness. Of it I should go Metro back Prime to that because I, Force. I, but I, it really slapped me in the face. Like I couldn't. I well, like, you got to play it multiplayer. Right? Oh well, yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, very ambitious. And from yeah. uh, is this from the Luigi's player? Mansion guys? Indeed. Is or the Mario player? Strikers guys? Is there a single player campaign or? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think you can. Yeah. It's the same campaign, and I think it's scaled depending on mm. how many you're playing with. Okay. But still, it's yeah. like it's just like it's so much better co op. We yeah. should play it together. That'd be super fun. It would be fun actually because it looked. It's impressive. It's an impressive production for sure. Yeah, they shouldn't have called it Metroid. They should have no. called it something else. That was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That was that was a bad idea to mm-hmm. call it that. Anyway, yeah, because it's a shame because it took away from all of the amazing hard work that the team did. Because mm-hmm. everyone was expecting Metroid Prime on the 3DS. Well, what a slap in the Let's face when it's, like Metro, when it's called Metroid Prime 2. Yeah. And I think that was before like, Metroid on. Prime 4 was what was announced. Yeah. I mean, so at, like, at least call it like... It? Chibi Metroid yeah, game? It it's like... Chibi Metroid or something. Call it something. Yeah. That you're like, yeah. okay, this is it's a cute cool. offshoot. Let's go. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So I'll go... And we've talked about this so many times. It's all about expectation. If the player yeah. is in on it and their expectation is this and you give them this, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. But if the expectation is this and you give them this, you're screwed. Mm. <laughs> you're done. You know? Exactly. So always about managing expectation, not in a manipulative way, but in a true way. If you mm-hmm. know your game is this, great. Then tell them it's this. So when they get to it, they're like, yay, this is awesome. You know? Don't overhype it. Don't lie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Don't lie about it. Just, you know, drip I'm sure it. that journey of that game was insane too, you know, about what's oh, going I can't through. Even imagine. Yeah. It's a shame because yeah, they, they, they do great work. I mean, all of their games oh, are super dude. solid. Yeah. They're, they're great. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. So that's that. Oh, we have an interesting segment we're going on to next. We'll be uh, mm-hmm. chatting with a fan guest who purchased one of these lovely things. Oh, yeah. this thing? This little thing. So just to reiterate, if you do buy one of those, um, at least for the time being, <laughs> until um, we run out of um, airtime, we'll, uh, we'll invite you on the show. So mm. without further ado, we'll move over to that. Whip. Boom. See, I'm just going right into it, guys. This is how we roll here. This is how we roll. So on yes, this week's Limp Biscuit style. Show, <laughs> Limp Biscuit style. That's right. I don't know what that means, but I like it. All right. <laughs> so this week, we have a special guest, Barry Dunn, on the show. Thank you for purchasing one of our delish, delicious mugs. Oh, Do you have it nearby? You're welcome. Hello. Nice proof of mm. purchase. <laughs> no purchase necessary. Amazing. Purchase necessary. Purchase um, necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> um, we've actually known Barry for years, which is a unique um, yeah. coincidence with the situation. I, I very much appreciate you buying our mug. You know you didn't have to, but thank you. I appreciate it anyway. Hey, man. How you doing? Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you guys too. It's like, it's weird because I haven't done, like, been on a podcast in maybe over a year or two at least, maybe right. three years. You moved Cause, from uh, Ireland to England, right? So you've been, it's yeah, been yeah. a busy year. Yeah. So I'm being, I've been here like 13 months now, but I mean, I love my life here. Like, I wouldn't change it for the world. But I mean, I guess, like, me doing podcasts before, like, I haven't done a podcast myself. Actually, the last podcast I've done was with you, Perry. Believe oh, it or not. no way. That's crazy. Yeah, no, that, that's near, yes. that's well, nearly a year ago, whatever it is now. But I mean, wow. Like, I usually do the show, but it's weird being on a podcast, you know. And Jules, it's great to be able to talk to you on a podcast at all. Absolutely, you know, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, yeah, we always chat, I guess, offline, oh, yeah. I suppose. I guess yeah, it yeah. hasn't been recorded, have um, Yeah. So cool. Well, this is unique. This is the first time we've done a fan guest on the show. Obviously, you're a friend as well. So that's a unique quality of this texture yes. that we're creating today. Um, so you typically, what we'll do in this is we'll get to know the person coming on, which is you. And then obviously you can ask us a question. So tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Who are you and what do you do? Yeah. So I guess <laughs> I'm Barry. Hi, Barry. Uh, hello. Or Barry hello, for Barry. All, all my American friends. Right. Uh, I guess I'm a YouTuber. I guess I've been doing this for eight years mm-hmm. this month, actually. Wow. That's weird. Yeah, uh, I guess, yeah, so I was originally called Nintendo Impact Gaming, and then I changed myself to Impact Game Station, IGS, and because I wanted to, even though I have all gaming systems, I wanted to e- expand on the brand, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah. appeal to more Not people, a bigger audience, yeah. of course, Yeah, and uh, it's because of, you know, doing YouTube, I've actually met you guys, because if I didn't do yeah. it, I, like, you know, we wouldn't be talking today, it's amazing, I love it. <laughs> We may be, because if you got the mug and they're like, hey, I got the mug, we, we probably would have been talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true, but uh, you no, know. Purchase necessary. Purchase but necessary. It, it is great that we, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been chatting on and off for, for years, it feels like, which is amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
I guess, well, maybe I can say this. I haven't, so it hasn't been revealed yet. So Ooh, I've landed a, a voice cast, uh, you know, I'm doing a lead role in a video game, a horror game. It's going to be announced this week as we're speaking. Oh, that's so cool, yeah. dude. Wow. I know you, like, you've always been yeah. looking for voice stuff or doing voice work. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I just that's cool, love dude. To, yeah. So I do, you know, uh, singing and, you know, acting on stage and whatnot. So I love it. Dude, that's amazing. Are you doing so, that in England? Uh, I actually, my first show in England was last Christmas, yeah. Wow. So oh, wow. It we was need video like, footage. You were tiny, this. Tim. Exist? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, the video, the video footage of this performance? There is, well, actually, so my, my, my mom and my auntie flew over to surprise me the day before to come see the oh, show. Oh, cool. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, so to, then, like, this. it sounds amazing. <laughs> I'll send it to you uh, after, but I mean, uh, it's just like so funny. My character was actually called Jack Daniels, but you know, what's you know, an Irish drink, typical, but uh, perfect on stage. Nice. Yeah, so perfect. that's awesome. So, wow, so it's gonna be announced this week or next week, you said the horror game? No, yeah, this this Saturday, yeah, it's gonna be revealed. Oh, yeah. wow. that's amazing. What, uh, that's what so can exciting. you say about it? I mean, is that all you can say about it for now? Do you want know platforms it's on or? Is that oh yeah, so it's going to be group? on PlayStation platforms, platforms. So more the PS4, PS5, uh-huh. Xbox systems, uh, Switch, and PC. If I'm correct. Wow, dude, neat. Look, yeah. look out for it. So how can you give us a clue? And if we, when we hear the news, we're like, that's the one buries him. One okay, any so if you actually clue that won't give it away, but we'll know it when we see it. If you go okay, if you go onto my Twitter, you'll see me like retweet stuff, but. It's, it's that's there. not fun. No, no, no. That's not good enough. <laughs> so is there a color or a quality or an animal or anything unique about this game? So when we see blah, blah, you know, oh, the Red Baron of, of Nischwenstein is announced. We're like, oh, there it is. That's what Barry's in. Well, unique it's a horror game. Story. So you, you could say it's as dark as myself, but. <laughs> as dark joke, as sorry. yourself. That is very yeah, obscure. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a skin joke <laughs> wow you know good times yeah, yeah. good times all right okay yeah, yeah. so it's a dark yeah. game all right cool i got you yeah I got we'll you. be on the lookout dude congrats that's amazing so yeah, have you, you. Or, is the game done you've recorded all your lines everything's done or no so actually the demo is actually live this week in, in the uh some indie event in valencia in spain okay. mm, so cool. i actually okay. so i'm playing the uh the main lead, but mm-hmm. they needed someone to record the uh, the villain as well that you'll see in the in the gameplay footage. Mm-hmm. So, hey, I don't know. I, I could be playing the two roles. I haven't a clue yet. So, and but they actually, the guy was you know was that okay. impressed. Yeah. I actually thought the the creepy the guy was creepy enough for him. So, which is good. Yeah, nice, very <laughs> oh, cool, man. man. That's amazing. Good stuff, dude. We'll look forward to yeah. seeing it. That's amazing. Congrats. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Just you know, it's just a cool experience. Yeah, man. That's amazing. Super fun. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, we've done voice work on and off over the years. Like it, it's fun. It's embarrassing. It's weird, but it is super fun. Jules is oh, like yeah. his own for a lot of it. Yeah, awesome, I mean, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's the other, the other um, line from ATV Wild Ride? Yeah, the ATV uh, Wild Ride ones are amazing. Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he also does the Atui uh, intro music with the yep, whatever. That's yeah, that's my yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that you? Yep. Oh, yep, that's yeah. I didn't even know that. There yep. you go. Also, the Holy villain art. in Dementium. That was fun. Anyway, good times. Um, do you have a question for us, Barry? I do. I'm hoping it wasn't asked now. So I actually had to write it down just to make sure I don't mess it up. So for both of you, is there any gaming system that you both would like to develop a game for that you have or have not touched and why? And if, you know, what kind of game would you like to work on? It's just a twofer. It's a two-part. You yeah, not sorry. Two questions into that one there. Sneaky. Like, like is this like current or can it be like going back? Yeah, yeah. So current and past. So like if you had the chance to do uh, make a game for any system. Well, my answer would be 3DS. Boom. <laughs> I'll say uh, honestly, that. Honestly, mine actually might be the same, honestly. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm sad that, that, that that's dead, you know, that, that platform's yeah. dead. 3DS yeah. or Virtual Boy. Virtual Boy is kind of a beast to actually play and enjoy that, that one, unfortunately. But um, the player experience isn't isn't great on Virtual Boy, unfortunately. Yeah, for like but, 10 minutes, not even. <laughs> yeah, and just you have to sit there hunched over and facing yeah, it. It's just like stupid. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. I remember but, like yeah. sitting like I got a Virtual Boy and like I'm trying to like set it, like sit back in on my couch face. like with it like bouncing on my nose. Like <laughs> Amazing. It terrible. 
I agree. I actually, I might want to go with three discs as well. Something else though, I do, I, I, I do. It's a bummer that I miss the kind of Game Boy Color, uh, Wonder Boy, Wonder Swan, Swan, Wonder Swan. Yeah, Wonder Swan era. The Game Boy mm. Color, Wonder Swan era would have been really fun making stuff then. That would have been cool too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it would have been cool to do those Virtual Boy games. Yeah, <laughs> the Wario Land and stuff. Mm-hmm. But we have Mutant Muds, so there you go. There you go. It's <laughs> basically course. Gargoyle's Quest nice. and right. Wario it's on Land the Switch. Together. Pick it up right now. It's amazing. There you go. Exactly. Is that, that is too hard for my liking? That is That's... the OLED Switch. Yeah. Yes, sir. Very it's nice. beautiful. Yeah, Perry has one of, of those. Of course, has the mm-hmm. lovely kickstand in the back. Oh, you can that see is a there. nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. You, uh, well, Mutant Muds is too hard for you. Yes, but uh, Chicken oh, Wiggles, you know, slash Chicken Wiggle Workshop slash Hatch Shields is my cup of tea. It's lovely. Yeah. Oh, well, you well, haven't just played. Wait until you get to. I know. Holly's. You haven't played Holly's <laughs> Nightmare. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. No, that'll be good because uh, the way we've designed it, I think it will work out well. You'll have the the tools, your arsenal. You'll have it. You'll have everything you need to take it on if you've gone through the main campaign. So, it should work out. Hey, I'm also one of the producers. Funny enough, of the game. Oh right, yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> yeah. No, you. Yeah, you backed one of the higher tiers on that, didn't you? The highest one, yeah. The highest one, amazing. Yeah, so totally legit. So when we have our release party, are you still going to fly over here? Oh, look, you don't know what's going to happen with you know with COVID. You don't know what's going to happen, do you? <laughs> I know. Isn't that crazy? So. Yeah, so hopefully that will be happening. We'll be doing that this year, and uh, we'll, I'll let you know. Hey, look, we'll if it comes to it, out. have like a Sky party, and I'll, I'll join. Yeah, mm-hmm. Exactly. We'll do or in this party. case, a Zencaster yeah. party. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. exactly. No, it's going to be fun. Sweet. Well, cool. Well, I think that's probably it for this week's show, because this is the we're also going to wrap up our show in this segment. That's right. So it's been beautiful. Thank you for spending time with us all, everyone. Hmm. And we'll see Thank you, you guys next week thank you Jules see you Barry buy his cup see you guys (laughs) buy the cup